Well, welcome back on this great summer's day. We're going to go on with the NDE and we're going to start by looking at the tunnel. Now the tunnel is really most interesting because it's one of the features that tends to be there uh, most of the time. Although there are different kinds and types of tunnels which we'll look at in a moment. Just to remind you, the tunnels are seen whether you have a cardiac arrest, whether you have an illness, whether you're extremely frightened or whether you're relaxed. So to try and get the physiology of it from the cortical structure looks as if it's going to be different because the brain is in different states on each occasion. Nevertheless, let's have a go. Do you remember that the tunnel seems to be the way that the person feels they're moving from the outside to the inside realm. Classically, they go into a uh, opening, an area, which they move down either slowly or fast to a light at the end. But it's very different from that. Let me just show you one or two examples of this. So let us start with this tunnel. It's a painting by Hieronymus Bosch and it shows a tunnel-like structure receding into the distance with a bright light at the end and you can see very small at the exit to the tunnel is a figure which looks as if it's still progressing into the light. Now right back at the entrance to the tunnel there are two figures that are starting their journey. So the idea of a tunnel into which you enter, then move through into the light, is absolutely prototypical of the sort of tunnel that near-death experiences record. In fact, having said that, I'm quite wrong, because the numbers and types and kinds of tunnels are very different. Now, outside this tunnel, you can see Hieronymus has painted a couple of figures. They are in fact, one is an angel and the other is somebody else accompanying them. Now if we could see the whole painting, we'd see there'd be a lot of devils uh, on the left uh, going right down. Some of them one feels are falling down into hell. So it's a sort of passage to heaven and escape from hell. In fact, as I said, it is exactly like some of the tunnels which are reported uh, in the NDE, but they can take any form. For example, look at this. This is uh, rather like the pipe of a spin dryer, and that was exactly how it was described to me by the person who had the experience. The spin dryer produces this tunnel, and they moved and walked down it over the ridges to the end where there was this spot of light which got larger and larger. When I asked, does it feel real? They said, yes, absolutely. And did you feel real? That wasn't quite so important to her as the fact that she was at this point in the experience walking down the tunnel. So, do other people have very fixed uh, tunnel shapes, but not of the classical kind uh, painted by Hieronymus Bosch? And the answer to that is yes, they do. But again, it's very, very varied. And please keep in mind that there is a range of conscious states which will produce these tunnel-like artifacts. You could be sitting at home on the sofa, and having a near-death experience, they're not so rare uh, as one might expect. Or you could be very frightened, and that again could produce this type of picture, or it could be um, in the cardiac arrest, and this is the common one that one usually thinks of. So what is it that produces these very fixed, stereotyped tunnel effects? Are there different kinds? Well, yes, there are. Have a look at this slide. It shows the uh, picture of 
a sort of inky blackness. And in this inky blackness, there is sort of a way to go towards the light. Now, this is a very good description of some people who float through an inky blankness towards the light. Some of them float quickly, some of them don't. And one of the ones that, uh, I think one of the deepest ones that I had was uh, a man who was, when his near-death experience started, it was during a cardiac arrest, he was in a room and uh, talking to three figures with their backs to him and they were asking him questions and the questions got more and more difficult they were all about the universe and how it was structured and everything like that he was an air traffic controller in fact and um, they came to the point where he felt that he had almost total knowledge of the universe at that point the walls of the room dissolved and he found himself in this inky black blackness and he found himself sort of swimming but not really and moving towards the light and as the light got closer and closer and closer he knew that this light was the ultimate principle of the universe and as uh, quite often is reported those who go close to the light or into the light feel the strength of, of love all around them. And this is exactly what he did. He also knew something else, as sometimes occurs. He knew that if he fused with the light, he would never come back. So he said that he would, he tried to stop himself there, which he did. And then he thought, I can't go into the light and never come back because I've got to tell my wife that everything is okay. It's all taken care of. There's nothing to worry about. And when we die, we will go into this sort of area, merge with the life, light, which is full consciousness. So he started to return and uh, finally, his near-death experience, experience ended and he came back uh, into the uh, operating theatre. Now, the question of uh, was he really going to fuse with the universe is one which I think we will need to answer, but maybe at this point let us take this tunnel as an example of those people who float, who are through totally unstructured areas and uh, find, find and see a light and move towards it. Does everyone? No, not everyone, but the majority do. Um, are there any other patterns? Yes, there can be very complex patterns. Uh, this is just a photograph of the galaxy, but it's to give you some sort of feel for the space which those with a near-death experience may go into. And remember again, it's not only those who have cardiac arrests, it's throughout the whole range. And if they're in this sort of uh, circling, twisting space, then they will uh, start to feel an intense feeling of love as they get close to the center, which there usually is, which is a light, which there usually is. Uh, what will the feeling of it like? Will it be an intense coldness? On the whole, people don't report that. But as they get closer to the light, they all report that it is warm and comforting. So those are different sorts of tunnels, and you can see they are very numerous. Well, let's think now what all these patterns could possibly mean. But before we do that, just a couple of outliers. Do you remember I was talking about hunter-gatherers and how one hunter-gatherer in his uh, NDE got into a canoe, paddled for three days before reaching an island which had the 
feelings and the structure of the sort of area that uh, people with NDEs go into. So there isn't a tunnel for everybody. But what about in Japan? Well, in Japan, they have a river and you have to find a boatman to take you across the river. And when you get to the other side, then again, the experience opens up into the sort of English country garden that I was talking about uh, last week. So what is it that can produce this tunnel-like effect? Now, there's been a very good paper uh, from a Bristol group uh, in the UK who argues that it may be the visual cortex uh, where this sensation arises. And they argue that if the visual cortex is disturbed, then you will get uh, patterns uh, amongst many others uh, of uh, tunnels like of the type I've shown you. They also look at the, the difference between NDEs and drug effects and notice that um, uh, patterns and groups of symbols and uh, linking together of, of cobweb-like structures and so on can all occur in drugs but don't occur in the NDE. But their feeling is that this is a visual cortex phenomenon that occurs when the visual cortex is destabilized either by a lack of oxygen or by the um, some other uh, alteration in brain function probably caused by an illness. So there is a lot to be said for this theory, I think. And they also, like any good scientist, suggest ways that the theory could be tested. Now, I think we need to probably go just beyond this. One of the things about the tunnel is that it feels real. Also, the uh, drifting through space feels real. And the question is, where does the realness come from? Well, the Bristol group argue quite straightforwardly and simply is that the body image is being distorted by uh, the changes in brain function or the mechanism which creates the body. So it's just an alteration in the internal paradigm which produces this feeling uh, of going down a tunnel. This isn't entirely satisfactory. If you're going to argue for another world theory, in other words, you're going to say, well, maybe it indicates that there is some area of space maybe not space, who knows, some energy area, quite an interesting idea, uh, where these things uh, take place and where you go, then you're going to say that there has to be some evidence for this. Now, the evidence for other, other worlds uh, in the NDE is confusing. There's some definitely for and some against. We're talking about out-of-body experiences and the fact that you can, in an out-of-body experience, see uh, things remotely. Well, of course, when we go into the NDE a bit further than the tunnel, you will see that people can get experiences where they bring information back that they couldn't have got uh, in any other way. So are these outside the brain? Well, you must make up your own minds. My view is that they probably are. In other words, we don't understand consciousness yet. Uh, you can't say that it's brain function only because you're then left with just neurons uh, firing off at each other and have to explain what Chalmers calls the hard problem. So I like the Bristol theory. I think it's very good. And indeed, I'm sure that it may account for some of them. Does it take us further? 
it gives us a good grounding in brain physiology and the patterns of experience which come from brain physiology. Uh, but does that explain everything? Well, <laughs> be nice if it did, wouldn't it? We're still left with, okay, so you've got patterns in the brain and these patterns in the brain um, look as if they are reflected in patterns in experience. But where's consciousness? None of us know. And that, of course, is going to be the, uh, the question for this next century. So let's leave the tunnels. And uh, next time, uh, we'll go into the land uh, of the wonderful English country garden that people go into and look at some of the phenomena that occur there. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to being back with you soon.